justice for all. <laughs> nice to see a full house here tonight. Um, I've got a few announcements I'd like to make. Uh, earlier today at 4.30, we had a uh, meeting in this room. The downtown strategic uh, plan was sort of unveiled and discussed, uh, the draft of it. And I uh, just want to remind people that there is a, an online survey that will be up on the city website until January 31st. And we encourage people to take a look at that and weigh in with their opinions. Also have a, uh, an announcement here I'd like to uh, read. It's the League of Women Voters. Winona offers voter education. And uh, it's Monday, January 27th, 6.30 to 8 o'clock here in the council chambers. And uh, it's uh, at the presentation, the League will discuss how you can participate in the Minnesota caucus for the party of your choice. The 2020 Minnesota Precinct Caucus date is the evening of Tuesday, February 25th. And uh, uh, the public is welcome. Also, there was a, uh, an announcement this week uh, from Senators uh, Klobuchar and Smith and Congressman Hagedorn's office announcing a $1 million uh, grant to the city uh, for uh, $1 million in grant funding to improve infrastructure in Winona. The award will allow MnDOT to complete a project on Broadway Street, including reducing the roadway from four lanes to three lanes over 1.9 miles and adding sidewalks and pedestrian ramps to uh, improve safety. And then also I have a proclamation I would like to uh, read. Um, whereas the, the Winona State University has a club sport for women's rugby. And whereas the Winona State University women's rugby <coughs> team completed for the first year in a Division I league during the regular season and finished undefeated. And whereas the Winona State University women's rugby team Return to Division Two for the postseason playoffs, and whereas they competed with approximately 160 teams within the USA Rugby Division Two competition, and whereas Winona State University women's rugby team reached the Final Four for the ninth consecutive year, and whereas the Winona State University women's rugby team won the USA Rugby Division Two College National Championship on December 8th of 2019 with a win over Colorado School of Mines 19 to 10. And whereas this win marks the third national championship for the Winona State University women's rugby team in the last nine years. Now therefore I, Mayor Mark Peterson, hereby proclaim Tuesday, January 21st, 2020 as the Winona State Women's Rugby Team Day. Congratulations. And I understand you want to do a group picture? <laughs> Come up here. Just stand, fill in here. But face that way. Come on up. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, no, you guys can stand, stay, up in stand. Back. The people on the front have to scooch. <laughs> yeah, we don't need. We don't. We're good. We're gonna hide, <laughs> hide us. <laughs> Sometimes we stick hands up, but it's all good. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs>
your average ping pong team. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, over my threshold. Uh, <laughs> yeah, look out. All I had. It's quiet in here now. Yes, I kind of right. missed them already. Right. <laughs> yeah. City manager, you have anything? Yes, I just wanted to uh, wish the best of luck to Dr. Hamid Akbari, the uh, dean of the School of Business who left Winona State. Um, Dr. Akbari has done wonderful things in this community for this time while he was here and we're going to miss him. Um, I was able to introduce him to the mayor of the city of Waukesha, Wisconsin, where Carroll University is and so I'm sure he'll pick up there and, and do great things for that community as well. And just want to remind folks at home that Tag and Toe for downtown <coughs> is on for tonight and tomorrow night. So don't okay. park on the street. Thank you. Roll call. Mayor Peterson. Here. Councilman Thurley? Here. Moeller? Here. Alexander? Here. Iden? Here. Borshakowski? Here. Schollmeyer? Here. Under the petitions, requests, and communications, item 3.1 is sign and banner requests. But you can delete the one for St. Mary's, so it would just be for the Frozen River Film Fest and the DAC. Move to approve. Second. Motion uh, by Michelle, second by Eileen. Any discussion? A question. Yeah. Yes, I noticed that no one has signed up to use the space at Central Park. Is it not a popular place to put an announcement? Is there a better place? Um, this is early in the year, so when I bring the next set of count or signs, you'll see that all okay. of the so signs it, are pretty it is much used. used. Yes. It's, it's, okay. Thanks. Okay. Anything else? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Here is. Item 3.2 is to request a vacation of the alley on Block 37 of Plumer's Edition. This would be to set the public hearing for February 3rd. I would note there is a typo. It's Plumer's without the B. Move okay. to Plumer's approve edition. the okay. hearing date. Second. Motion by George and seconded by Michelle. Discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Under new business, item 5.1 is to renew the safe ride agreement. Make a motion to execute the agreement. Second. Motion by Michelle, second by Paul. Discussion? Yeah. Just, a, just a question. Uh, March 9th through the 13th is the break for Winona State, not just the 6th and 7th. And so shouldn't, wouldn't we need service on Friday the 13th and Saturday the 14th? I just... Wanted to make sure we were covered for kids that are, were before they leave on their break and run as they come back. If I'm screwing up the numbers, just, just go ahead, but I uh, wanted to make sure we had them covered. So um, these are the dates that Winona State and St. Mary's have requested, and typically when they are on break, they don't want service on either weekend. So if they're for, for Winona State, okay. Um, That's the weekend before. They want both the weekend before and after. And since they overlap by one weekend, that's why there's one weekend with one and one weekend with none. Right. So it has to do with the staggered times for their, their okay, break. I just wanted to make sure we were going to cover any staggering students. That's all. <laughs> now, um, with this agreement running through... Uh, or through May 2nd, 
uh, and we have apparently uh, uh, an agreement that is expiring with the current operator of municipal transit, Three Rivers. Uh, is that going to be an issue when it expires on April 30th through, you know? Uh, no, we time? are um, still planning that our new bus operator would take over on May 1st. But okay. I have talked to both St. Mary's and Winona State. They're aware of the situation. Okay, and while we're confident that we'll have the new vendor in place, we do have contingencies um, that Winona State would run their bus that weekend if, if it's not okay. possible. I'm sure you had it covered, had to ask. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Item 5.2 is the renewal of the property and liability insurance for 2020. Make a motion to adopt the attached resolution. Second. Second. Motion by Michelle, seconded by Eileen. Discussion? Yeah. Um, I noticed that you know, our total cost for this year is going up by $10,167. But I do have a question, um, you know, realizing that insurance rates do increase, and especially with liability issues. Um, in the coverage for municipal liability for the data security breach, I'm noticing that last year it was $3 million annually. This year it's $2 million annually. I'm just curious about why that went down. I, I think that it's because their overall limit normally is the two million, and they just have the overall limit of two million. Okay, so I mean, you're not concerned that this might be exposure to the city than if it went down by a million. I hope we don't ever have to put a claim in for anything to do with data yeah. security. So right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not concerned. I mean, any more than anyone else for Would cyber be, security. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Anybody else? Michelle. Mary, as always, thank you for including as much detail as possible. It really is helpful to see how it's broken down by type, equipment. I mean, I just, it, it's really helpful when we're looking at the overall cost to see what we're really covering. So I appreciate that very much. And you can see the main reason for the increase is because of the property, the first, uh, the first item that Al mentioned. It's a good reason to go up. Any I mean, increase value. Any other comments? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Curious. Item 5.3 is the renewal for 2020 for the workers' comp and accident plan for city volunteers. I would make a motion to accept the staff recommendation to select the rated premium option. Second. I second that. Motion by Michelle and seconded by Pam. Discussion? Yeah. I just want to note that, no, you, I'm not going to ask a question there. <laughs> I just want to note that if we were to take the guaranteed premium, that increased by $46,219. So I'm glad we're doing the retro rated minimum. So it's a good thing. And we've been successful so far with that. Any other comments or questions? The only comment I would have, Your Honor, is um, the experience module went down from 1.05 to 0.99, and that's the number you want to have below one, so the hard work of the city, and um, unfortunately that number fluctuates, but um, we did pretty well last year. Good. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Curious? Item 5.4 is the park maintenance budget transfer. We'll do approved up transfer. Second. Motion by Paul, seconded by Aileen. Discussion? Yeah. Yes, I'd like a little clarification of what the remaining $40,000 would be used for. <coughs> so after the money is spent. Um, here in council, um, go, going back to August, if you can remember during the budget process, some of the last items that were not included in the 2020 budget um, that we had some discussion about were um, the, the removal of funding for levy park events, and so we had a we had a standing line item uh, this past budget in 2019 for those those events, the, like the live at the levies, the Fourth of July event. Uh, we had some discussion right at the end of the budget about adding some dollars back in for part time staff within the uh, recreation department. Again, you, you you chose not to do that. That's that, that was clear. 
Uh, but we would like to add some back with um, some part-time staff. So part of that 40, remaining 40,000 we would allocate toward Friendship Center staff and East Rec uh, Center staff specifically. Uh, we do um, would like to keep that uh, contingency. We do that with most of our projects, and so part of that 40,000 is just simply a contingency. And then um, we are proposing um, 10,000 of that remaining go to um, support public engagement. So we know that uh, whether that's through the arts programming or through the arts strategic plan, um, we've had some brief discussion about uh, some engagement with the Friendship Center move to the East Rec and engage in the East Rec neighborhood or in East End. And then I think that, as we alluded to in the council agenda item, some of our sustainability projects as well. And so it breaks down, and that adds up to about the 40000 approximately with that bid for a contingency. Okay, thank you. George, you had a question? Uh, pretty much what Pam was asking, just okay. for clarification on it. So, Any other questions or comments? All right, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item 5.5 is the 2020 budget amendment for the City of Winona website. Make and a motion. A resolution. Make a motion to approve the attached resolution. Second. Motion by Michelle and seconded by Paul. Comments or discussion? Paul. Oh. Yeah, so I, I guess my concern would be uh, uh, do we have a feeling that this is so? One of the comments I hear probably most frequently is the inadequacy of our, our website and how difficult it is in navigating. And do we feel that this is going to take care of it? We do. Ma manage it? We do. Good. We put a technology committee together of uh, most of the departments were represented, and we looked at a lot of communities. We looked at a lot of... Uh, software options or, or program options. It came down to Granicus and Civic Plus, uh, and they are the two major um, public sector website designers, and the group recommended Civic Plus. I have a question. If, um, you know, there's these annual service fees that are, we're committing to, I guess. Once we've committed to one company, are we ab ever able to change to another, a different company? Or are we always going to have to stick with the one the provider that we're selecting tonight? We, would sw we could switch, but it generally wouldn't make any sense to do that until the contract ran right. out. But, I mean, you, you, it's not proprietary uh, software that we wouldn't be able to... Their, their website is proprietary. Okay. Yeah. And that's you know one of the issues that we had with our existing website is we never really had any follow up. You should change this. You should look into this. Um, ADA status, for instance, those things were all. We kind of came to the conclusion that we needed to change it, and that was one of the discussions that we had with council and and with staff that we wanted to really try to do something um, and make a make a drastic change to to. Well, what we we're need offering. to. I mean, I'm find our website very frustrating and I don't know anybody that thinks it's a really good website so I think it's a good thing what we're doing. Al and then Eileen and Michelle. Oh I'm sorry. Go ahead. See your hand up. Um, uh, what other cities in Minnesota have this particular vendor that you looked at? Quite a few. A hundred? <laughs> really? There quite a few. Okay. Quite a few. Okay. And, and another question is um, what department uh, in the city is going to be responsible for the connection to this vendor and to make changes going forward and to respond to uh, you know some issues that may or may not come up in especially in the beginning of it? We will continue to use the technology committee, okay. but one of the things that we really liked about this is it's it's fairly easy to maintain once it's set up. So each department will be responsible for their own content, oh. which I will certainly review, as will sure. the technology committee. So again, the belief is that while it would be nice to have one single person doing all of this, um, in a sense, I think, especially for the first year, for everyone to mm -hmm. equally feel the pain about putting content on there, 
Um, we'll have to see how that goes long, longer term. And uh, has the city attorney reviewed the agreement that yes. we're entering into? I'm assuming he did. But... He did. Okay, thank you. No. It does not. Um, we, we would still maintain Laserfiche. There would still be a web link. We are this week doing an upgrade to Laserfiche that will include the link on, on the web face. So mm -hmm. the interface will be better. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, and then the compatibility with ADA access. What what sort of um, accessibility features does that include for? There's a whole range um, from blowing up the size of the of the font to um, I think there's actually like a, a voice readover mm -hmm. for some of for some of it so there's very specific ADA requirements and and this software will from them that they'll make suggestions things like that but is there a specific number of hours do they have a cap as far as like you can only we can only be available X amount of time for the first year or there's anything? caps to the number of direct hours we would have when we're swapping over. Okay. But they have people that, during their open hours, mm -hmm. uh, that are monitoring their sites. You can click right on it and say, "I need help." You know, I'm stuck. I lost the picture or something. Sure. And and they will they'll respond right back online and help you resolve whatever the issues are. Okay. And then my last question was: Are do will there be um, training for the staff members that are going to be? Yes maintain this great and again they'll have access to that online assistance awesome that's great Michelle I was just going to say I, I played with Civic Plus I've gone to some of their websites and oh so user-friendly um, it's it's a pretty phenomenal system even depending on the range of product you can purchase I think that from a website that is I'm going to guess difficult for staff members to use to this is going to be like night and day. And I think that if each department can come up with the right person who will be responsible ultimately for that content, you're going to have no problems loading onto it from the, I watched a little kind of video for cities that were thinking about using it and it looks like it couldn't be simpler for the staff members to load. Just like when you build your own website, it, it looks like it's pretty much the simplest thing and what I'm looking forward to is myself being able to access <laughs> our website so it's a little bit selfish so I'm very happy to see this on here and I'm I'm, I'm really pleased that group picked Civic Plus because I thought their their programming was pretty phenomenal so I'm really happy to see this come back forward uh, what's the time frame we um, will start as soon as we get the conferences <laughs> I guess I'm being optimistic. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> I got the idea. Right, Between good. September or July and September. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions, comments? I would, I would just note doubt myself and Tina will be doing a lot of the content, and we do have two elections prior to then. That's, that's the delay. So you'll have lots of free time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And item 5.6 is the drug-free workplace and non-DOT drug and alcohol testing policy. I make a motion to approve the updated drug-free workplace and non-DOT drug and alcohol testing policy and the other stuff. Second. Motion by Michelle, seconded by George. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Item 5.7 is the Huff Street Trunk Highway 61 traffic signal and pedestrian facility improvements certification of completion. I make a motion to approve the attached resolution and authorize the final estimate. Second. Motion by Michelle, seconded by George. I have a question. Uh, I meant to go out there today to look, but on the uh, wasn't there going to be some, the median as you're crossing. 61 from Huff Street. Wasn't there going to be a, this kind of a safety area there in that median? And I don't there think is a minor refuge there. Is it? It's not built up or anything, but there is a refuge for people to stand. Okay. It's. It didn't look. Probably it didn't look right very now. even official. Even you can't really see it very well right now. Well, even before I. It didn't look finished. I guess if that's what that was it's going to be. It's definitely there. It's oh, it is. Okay. All right, well, I'll take another look. It's not raised up on purpose. Okay. 
All right. Thank you. Yep. Any other comments or questions? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Item 7.1 is council concerns. We'll start with uh, Pam. <laughs> uh, I would I'd just like to take a moment to congratulate the student senate leaders who, who uh, have been participating on the city's pedestrian safety committee with Winona State. Uh, these student senate leaders have taken it on themselves to generate a pedestrian safety campaign on campus. We've been talking about this for years, both for students and also for people in the community. Uh, for every accident, I mean, half or a good, good percentage of the accidents that, that happen are, have some measure of pedestrian responsibility. So they are, have generated a campaign, and it will be going on this month, and it will be used as a, they have all kinds of things going on, but it will be used as a, a, a pattern for future campaigns. Every time there's a new class coming in, they'll, <coughs> they'll rev up this pedestrian safety campaign. I think it's a great idea. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Paul? Uh, two things. Thank you. Um, I, I would like to ask uh, Council if, if it would be okay to have an agenda item and, uh, for our second February meeting uh, related to the TCMC second train and some updates uh, related to the governor's bonding bill and perhaps a, a resolution that relates to uh, support I for the I same. Certainly support it. Um, the second uh, thing, uh, uh, I passed along to each of you uh, a, a card for the official launch parties for the Flyway Trail. I believe that this is going to be uh, uh, an actually an economic uh, uh, deal for our community. And we are having two public launches, one on February 25th and one on March 3rd. Uh, you all are invited. Um, uh, Monarch, you might want to make a note of that in case more than three of us show up. Um, um, but it's it's a it, obviously it's a it's a fundraising thing to raise some dollars for Match, um, and it'll be held at uh, Winona History Winona County History Center on each date. So hope that uh, you all can maybe find some time to fit in that your schedule. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, George. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this evening, I'd just like to uh, announce that at last week, Tuesday's HRA board meeting, uh, the, the present officers were re-elected, James Kirk as vice chairman and myself as chairman. And the other members on the board are Margaret Walsh, Robert Hyberley Johnson, and Matt Hazelton. And as we know, that board is appointed by the mayor and then elected by the council. So James and I and the rest of the board members will be serving on that board for the upcoming year. Also, like I said, I kind of mentioned some uh, New Year's wishes and things at the last meeting. Uh, and I think we're making an effort towards it, but I would like to see all drug houses and drug dealers removed out of this community. They're here, they come in, they totally just devastate a neighborhood. And I know we're making some efforts and I've seen some results of it and I hope we can continue to work on getting these homes and getting these people out of our community. And also, I would just like to wish uh, wishes of good health to uh, Chris Kramer, uh, City of Winona Tree Crew Foreman, to Chris and, his, and good wishes to his family as well too as he continues a very, very major battle with health. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Michelle? Well, again, like always, I'm going to talk about the Kashibian Capital Centennial celebration. Our February events are sold out. However, our first big signature event, which will be at Sobieski Pavilion and Park, is on March 28th. It's a pet parade. It is a free event, however, if you want to participate in the parade in a competition format, you need $4 or a dollar a leg. So if you have a three-legged <laughs> pet, $3. If you have a snake, $0. And we also hope you don't come. Um, uh, so go to our website, kcc2020.org, to register. 
Um, it should be fun. There'll be lots of activities and food and things like that happening. A, a fur ball with only music that engages some type of animal name, so we should have a pretty good time with that. Um, always looking for volunteers. I know this is early for Winona, but I'm telling you this now because our, we've sold over 50 tickets for an event that's happening in December, and so it makes me concerned that some of these things will be sold out before you go to our website. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Eileen. I uh, just wanted to thank uh, the folks who came to the downtown strategic plan session um, this afternoon, early evening, and thank the staff members who put that together. Um, and to remind folks that uh, if they weren't able to come down here physically, because I know that is a barrier for a lot of people, there is a serve. Okay, thank you. Al? Uh, originally, I didn't have anything, but uh, Council Person Alexander brought up uh, uh, some of the uh, Kashubian events coming up, and especially the um, the animal event that's uh, coming up soon. And I have a music request, if you might. Oh, yes. <clears throat> if you would, uh, I would love think to about that playing uh, a song by the Tokens okay. called "The Lion Sleeps Tonight." Oh, sure. <laughs> that's all I have. Excellent. All right. Thank you, Al. <laughs> All My right. first request. Moving on. <laughs> Under the consent agenda, there are three items. Approval of the minutes from January 6th, a claim against the city by Nathan Woodworth, and a claim by Clara Markham. Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Al, seconded by Michelle. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mayor, I move we adjourn. Second. Okay, well, motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned.